everybody, Mike here, and today we're going to be looking at Diceborn Heroes. You begin the game by drawing some bounty cards. For uh, Solo, you're going to control two heroes. I'm going to draw two cards and assign one to each hero. Okay, so these are sort of like background cards that also give the character a, a way to level up and become more powerful. Okay, so here first we've got an adventurer whose village has been preyed upon by a flying predator returns home for justice. So uh, to gain this bonus, which will give him an extra hero token, an additional ability to use his hero tokens for, I need this hero to place a block token on a hero with three or more wounds. And uh, I get these before I choose my hero, so I can get somebody who might have an easier time placing uh, block tokens and shielding people. And then here we've got a hunter on the prowl, overwhelmed by all the monster attacks, decides to take up the fight. Okay, discard two boys poisoning or beast type spoils. So this one isn't really specific, uh, it's just I have to kill some certain enemies of certain types. But here I want to get somebody who can give some shields. So with those in mind, I get to pick my heroes, so let's look at that. So there are four basic classes in the game. Uh, fighter and Thief are the physical classes, Priest and Mage are the magic classes. And to show you some of the basic things for all the classes, first are the number of life, how much damage they can take, the fighter is the only one with four. The number and color of the dice they roll. You see all the uh, first uh, level characters start with only two green dice. Uh, what they can use their hero tokens for. So the fighter can reveal which attack cards are coming. Thief can deal damage. Uh, priest can prevent wounds. And the mage can change their die numbers. And finally, the abilities you can use your uh, dice for. Basically in combat, as you'll see, you roll one die and you place it. So you have to have a six or a four, uh, or four or higher or a five or higher here, or four or higher to place the die there, and then any uh, value green die can be placed in the bottom spot. So looking at my bounty cards, I remember one person wants to place a block token on here with three or more wounds. The fighter is the only one who can take three wounds, and he's also the only one who can place block tokens on himself. So one here will be a fighter, and he'll get that bounty card. My other one can kind of be whatever I want, but uh, let's see. Let's try the priest. I haven't actually played with her yet. I've played all the other ones, so we'll see how she works out. To complete my hero setup, I give each hero their two starting green dice, and I give them their hero tokens on their active side. Now this varies by player count, but uh, with just two heroes playing solo, they each get two of those tokens. I then shuffle all the cards and place them on the board. I've got monsters of levels one through three, items, attack cards, and uh, the quest stuff is about to come out. Now they have a bunch of individually bagged quest packs, and I'm going to do one of medium difficulty, Jade Peak Assault. Now first it's got a little guide card that tells me what order I should be playing uh, these cards in and what other cards are in the deck. And we've got a special rule that the boss can only hold one captured die. If we get to him, we'll see what that means. And this might apply earlier. Defeated villagers are kept aside and villagers' dice can be stolen. So we'll have some uh, allies we're trying to protect, I assume. So we keep the quest cards in numbered order with number one on top. And this is uh, Grasping Vines in the Wildland Jungle. The guards need to be warned of an incoming attack. A group of heroes are sent into the Wildland to aid. So basically during this battle, uh, there's going to be these vines trying to grab me. And every turn that I don't put a three or more die over here and lock it for the turn, then uh, it looks like they're going to attack me and take away one of my dice. Or maybe they steal a die? Yeah, it looks like I have to lock a die instead of attacking for one turn. And then I guess I prevent the vines for the rest of the mission. So it's just going to kind of waste one of my turns. And then we're going to reveal one monster. We're on the level one of the quest. We reveal uh, one monster per hero in the game. So we've got a Rack Root. Oh, that's a, a funny coincidence that it happens to look like the same guy. And a Mandragora. Now, by the way, this is just a generic like group of level one minions. The fact that I got two plant-based guys that sort of thematically mix with the quest well, that's just an accident. Now, to show you how these monsters work, uh, there's the amount of damage you need to do to defeat them. This is their spoils value. Basically, when you defeat them, you get to shuffle this many cards back into the attack deck. And the attack card deck not only determines how the enemies attack, but is also the timer for the game. If it runs out, you lose. So the higher the spoils value, the more the enemies help you when you defeat them. And we've also got their actual activation abilities. The Rack Root just attacks for one damage, but every time you attack him, he's going to retaliate for one damage. And the Mandragora doesn't do any regular damage, but she does poison you, which will do damage over time, which can be pretty nasty. By the way, Quest also has a bunch of extra cards, but these will only get added when instructed by the uh, Quest card, so I'm going to uh, keep them to the side for now. So to give you like a real quick overview of the basics of a turn, each hero will roll their dice, and then we'll assign one die to one spot that applies. So 
you know, if the priest rolled a one and a three, she would have to put one of those in her blank spot because neither one matches the requirements for another uh, dice spot. Now in this quest specifically, I can instead assign a die of three or more here uh, instead of attacking for that turn, and uh, that'll prevent the vines from doing their thing. Once I've assigned my dice, I flip an attack card for each of the monsters, and they'll generally show a value. The color doesn't matter until you're fighting the boss. Now the value is both the initiative order, because uh, we go from lowest to highest, so like if I had put a one value die, I would go before this five monster. Additionally, it determines whether they act and who they target. So for a five plus, he'll only attack a hero who also has a five plus die, and he'll attack the one closest to that five value. So if like the fighter had used a one and the priest had used a two, this rack root would not attack anybody on this turn. Uh, at the end of the turn, you discard all of the attack cards after you've resolved everything. And again, if the attack deck runs out, you lose the game. And the final little wrinkle to that are the hero tokens. You can use them uh, pretty much any time uh, when they apply. So here she can prevent a wound for a hero or an ally with each of hers. And the fighter can flip one to see what the attack cards are for this turn before he assigns his dice, which can help you uh, dodge the enemy's attacks. All right, so let's jump right into it. Priest gets a one and a six. Fighter gets a one and a one. Okay, so I don't think we need to use the fighter's ability this turn. The chances of actually getting hit are pretty low. Uh, I think the fighter is going to clearly do his bash. This says it does one damage, but first removes any shields the uh, enemy might have. Neither of these guys get shields, but if they did, um, getting rid of them would... Neither of these guys uh, make shields, but shields and block tokens basically just prevent damage on a one-for-one -one basis. Now, the vines are going to get their own attack card, which might uh, make us lose a die, but I think if we both do a one, we're probably okay. And she can do one damage. Our man Dragger only has two damage and no shield, so if they both do a single damage, they should be able to take him out right away before he gets a chance to poison anybody and have that recurring damage every turn. So this should keep us pretty safe. Okay, so now I draw three attack cards. Okay, so this is a shield card. Usually it would just immediately give a guy a shield, uh, but the Grasping Vines aren't something you really attack anyway, so I think that's just basically a wasted card for them. Four plus for Rackroot, so he's not going to attack at all. And six for Mandragora, also not going to attack. So again, we go from lowest to highest, so both the Priest and the Fighter get to go first. Whenever it's a tie, we decide whatever order we want. And in this case, the Priest and the Fighter are both going to attack the Mandragora, which immediately defeats him. Um, his card would be discarded, but he has a spoil of one, so this single six is going to the bottom of the deck, so we haven't actually uh, kind of lost any time from fighting him. Now he goes as a spoil, and we can decide what order they attack in. And remember, the uh, priest wants to discard two poisoning or beast-type enemies to unlock her uh, third hero token, so we're going to say she does the finishing blow to be halfway to her goal already. Okay, progressing up, the Rack Root doesn't attack anyone because no one has an assigned die of four or higher. The Grasping Vines never activates to take away one of our dice before they activate. So uh, we're good for our first round. We proceed to the second and roll our dice again. All right, so Priest gets a three and a one. I like these low results to keep ourselves safe. Fighter gets a four and a six. Okay, so he's not going to be able to do uh, that again. All right, so looking at the other abilities, the Priest uh, can either heal somebody for one or do one damage. But don't forget, Rack Root, whenever we attack him, he's going to do one damage back to us. So I'm thinking she might actually use her three to shut down those Grasping Vines for the rest of the battle, and then we only have to worry about Rack Root. The Fighter, on the other hand, has a choice between his two more powerful abilities, although he could still do Bash. So a four would give him a block token, and would also deal one damage to anybody attacking him. Now that's going to be more useful in turns that I use a hero token to find out who they're attacking. But Body Slam just seems so much better. Three damage and then he'll suffer a damage. And, yeah, I mean, he could take get hurt, but I don't think Rack Root will kill him entirely. So I think he's going to use the Body Slam. And like I said, the Priest isn't actually going to attack this turn. She's just going to do the uh, Grasping Vine ability and lock her three. So her three being locked means she doesn't get to activate otherwise this turn. And she will have one die for the rest of the battle. That die doesn't come back. But it also means that only Rack Root is getting an attack card this turn. And uh, that's how it's going to be for the rest of the battle, so we only have to worry about defeating him. Okay, we did get a 4+, plus, which means he's going to attack the fighter with a 6. And he goes first, so he does 1 damage to the fighter. Now the fighter can take 4 before being defeated, so he's fine so far. Now he's going to do 3 damage to Rackroot, leaving with only uh, 1 life left. There we go. 
But then, because Rackard has a retaliation ability, he's going to do one damage to the fighter for hitting him, and then the fighter does one damage to himself from the force of the body slam, so he's down to one life. Now, but look at this. Place a block token on a hero with three or more wounds to gain a third hero token. So, if uh, we can get a block token on the fighter with his four ability before uh, Rackroot potentially kills him, then we'll gain the ability of our bounty card. So we discard the four plus card, and don't forget that this attack deck is the timer for the game. We can't let that run out, and we're going to go to the next round. So Priest sadly only gets one die, so take what she can get, but she does get a one. And Fighter would love to get a four plus. Oh, there we go. Now, what I want to find out is whether the Priest needs to heal him or not, but I, I guess we'll find out either way. So yeah, I'm going to put the counter on him, and hopefully that means he'll be able to get his, uh, his little quest to go off. The Rack Root gets a 3+. plus. Interesting. So he will attack the Fighter because the Fighter is has a 3 or higher value assigned, whereas the Priest only has 1. Now we get into an interesting situation here because the uh, Priest resolves first, and <laughs> I'm not sure if it's optional because if she attacks, she'll defeat Rack Root. He's the only guy left, and he only has one life left. But that'll prevent the Fighter from uh, being able to do his ability. I mean, let's see, she could heal a hero or ally. Okay, I think this will work, because I'm pretty sure I can't just skip her attack. So let's say she's going to heal the fighter for one damage. So now he's at two, and he needs to be at three to get his ability to go off. Then the Rackery will attack him. Oh, man. Look, so again, the rackery has got uh, three life, and the second the die is placed, this little one retaliation goes into effect, so the fighter's going to hit the rack root back when he hits him. Which means the rack root will die, but he'll still have done his damage. And yeah, I just looked at the rules, and the game round doesn't end until the end of the round uh, when we see if there are any monsters left in play. So I believe it'll go like this. Rack root activates on three, and he does uh, one damage to fighter, bringing him back to three damage. And then uh, fighter's retaliation finishes this guy off. So a uh, fighter gets the spoils card, which is not one of the two that the priest needs. The attack card is one of the uh, three cards going to get shuffled back in, as long uh, along with two other attack cards. These go to the bottom of the deck. But now I believe the fighter still gets to finish his action, which would be to place a block token on himself. And because he's placing a block token on here with three or more wounds, he gets a third hero token. There we go. And he gets a new ability. If you spent the hero token, you can assign a second attack die, which means, oh my gosh, you get to do twice as much stuff in one turn. So we just slide that right underneath, and now he's got two hero token uses he can try. So with all the enemies defeated, we go into the end of quest phase. It says, scale the mountain. If the effect was not locked, gain the magic ring. Oh, so if we hadn't shut down the vines, I could have gotten a, uh, a special item from the quest deck. But unfortunately, since I couldn't deal with those vines every turn, I just had to shut them down. So next we go into the town phase, and the first thing we choose is whether we want to rest or not. Now the uh, the fighter's clearly going to rest to get all three of that damage gone. All it does is you have to discard one attack card when you rest. The priest doesn't need to, she was never injured. Next we reveal three item cards. And each gives you its cost up here. There's how many spoils cards you need to spend. We have two spoils which we could pull together to buy the ruby eye or the stun elixir. But don't forget, the Priest is halfway to getting her third hero token. So maybe it's not the right call, but I think we're going to hang on to those and not buy any of these. But just to show uh, in the Stamina Potions case, we would get some hero tokens back to use again. That's pretty great. Stun Elixir would hurt and stun an enemy. And the Ruby Eye would give you a permanent extra red die, which is pretty amazing. So these are all really good, but I'm not going to buy any of them right now. All right, now we get to one of my favorite parts of the game, which is leveling up. So both our guys are going to become second level heroes. And you've got a lot of options for what you do here. So let's do the fighter first. If we flip it over, we see that he can become either a monk or a knight. So let's look at both of those guys first. All right, so the knight has more life than the monk and has an extra die over the monk. That's a pretty big advantage already. His hero ability is to become the target of an attack. So I guess you could save the priest, but that's not too inspiring. Whereas the Monk lets you move two wounds from one monster to another. I can see that having use, but also not the best of abilities. In terms of their dice use, the Monk can do a Chakra. Remember that was in uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. So do two damage and heal. They can do Pummel, where they do... Oh, they, they basically double the wounds on an enemy. So if the enemy's already hurt three, they'll do three more wounds. That's pretty cool. And then Wave Fist for any red die. One damage to two different targets, plus one if those targets are stunned. 
So if you got a way to stun, that could be pretty good. The knight, kind of like the fighter, it has a like sort of a counter ability. It does one damage, but also does one damage to the enemy and gives everyone a shield. That's a great ability. Uh, Retribution, one damage, plus one damage for each wound on him. So that could be a ton of damage if he was really hurt. And then Flurry, one damage to two different targets, and remove shields first. So this is kind of like just an upgrade of the fighter, like slightly better versions. Now, if I choose to change being a monk or a knight, I'll flip the fighter over and choose one of these abilities to put underneath the new card. So I'll actually have an extra ability usable from the fighter's class. So here I would keep either the body slam or an improved counter ability, which doesn't make much sense to use with the, uh, the knight. But alternatively, I can actually take one of the back abilities of either the monk or the fighter, or sorry, the monk or the knight, and keep the fighter's abilities. So I won't have the slightly stronger abilities of the monk or the knight, but I do think the fighter's hero token use to uh, see what the enemy attack cards are is actually more useful than either of those. But then I would suddenly have two green dice. That seems pretty terrible. I would get plus one uh, life, so I'd have five life. Let's see, the knight would give me flurry. Two damage to two different targets and remove all their shields from this card. Oh, that's weird. I give them my own shields. Or I could have the repost, which again is only slightly better than my regular one. Could get a chakra, do two damage and heal myself too. Wow. Or the wave fist. See, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward either getting the chakra and staying a fighter or a becoming the knight. I don't like that the monk only has two dice and less life. I think I'll become the knight and protect my priest. So I'm going to keep the knight's card, get rid of the monk. So I can either uh, get the body slam ability, which was pretty good and does more damage than almost anything else the knight does, but it's a five plus. Or the counter. The nice thing about that is that I can use any green die. So even if the knight doesn't roll a four plus, I still have that as an option. It does two damage to each enemy that attacks and gets one shield. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So knight with a fighter's counter. And everything just kind of slots together. So the fighter goes underneath there. I've still got my extra hero ability underneath here. Now let's look at the priest. So she's going to look at alchemist or time sage. Those sound exciting. All right, both have only four life. Time sage does have the extra die. The hero ability is swap a revealed attack card with the top one of the discard pile. So I could kind of control how enemies attack sometimes. That's pretty nice. Discard an item card and draw a new one. Well, that's useless right now. I don't have any item cards. Now, in terms of their ability, haste. Heal one and a hero. That hero may assign two dice next round. Not as useful as it would normally be because the knight can kind of already do that, but I guess they could do it to themselves. And then break. One damage to three targets and plus one if the target is poisoned, but I don't have any way to poison. Now, I do have a way to stun, which would have gone well with... Uh, <laughs> The Monk's ability, one damage and a stun, but uh, not as important now. Now, as for the Alchemist, draw and keep an item with a 5+. plus. Wow. If it's a potion or elixir, you may uh, use it now without discarding it. Oh, my gosh. So that's that's a pretty amazing ability. Poison tip. All remaining hero attacks this round without poison gain poison. So that's a nice combo right there. And then grenade. Roll a die. One damage to that many targets. So that means it'll almost always hit everybody. So even though our hero token thing is kind of dumb, it will become useful if I get uh, something that I can't really use with the 5 plus ability. Now I have to, of course, consider keeping the priest abilities. I mean, that's better than that. Keep discarding and drawing an item card potentially. But definitely I think her abilities here are better overall, though I am losing the healing. None of these guys have healing like she does, except for, I guess, the time sage. If I stayed the priest, I would get plus one life, so I'd have four life regardless. I'd only have two dice, though. Okay, haste would heal a bunch. I don't really need that. Oh, I could get the poison tip thing and still be a priest. That's pretty intriguing. Or the grenade, two damage to two targets, then roll a die, suffer one damage myself if the result is one or two, but I really like that. That's a ton of damage you could be doing to lots of people. And then my final option is break... But again, I don't have any way to poison. I really... I'm really... Yes, I'm, I'm definitely going to do the uh, the alchemist with the priest, I think, but stay a priest. The only question becomes, do I want poison tip or grenade? So poison does one damage every turn and could eventually kill someone, but it feels like grenade's just going to kill them more quickly. And poison relies on the knight going after her 
because if they've already gone, it won't take effect. So yeah, I'm gonna gonna be a priest with a uh, holy hand grenade over here. Really <laughs> feeling good about that. All right, so with our knight and priest ready, we're going on to the second phase of the quest, a frozen camp with a god, 14 life ice giant. The storm has made monsters attacks worse. The barracks are not able to hold them back for long. Something big is approaching. Okay, face the ice giant. Do not reveal additional enemies. What? Oh, this is so different from anything else I've played. So all I'm fighting is one giant guy? Well, that makes the grenades multiple targeting much less useful right away. When the ice giant is defeated, each hero receives a spoils card from the monster's deck. Okay, so I just get like an automatic one. So six spoils, 14 life. He attacks for three damage and stuns. Gosh. So stunning, by the way, is not as bad as you might think it is. Uh, in most games, you like skip your entire turn. Here, you just act last as the turn, as though you had a seven after anyone uh, else who is not stunned. Now, immune, this symbol means an auto kill. There are some abilities that like automatically kill an enemy, so that would not work. And let's see, if we can lock a red die here, um, and only my knight has a red die, and he's only got one, so if he locks it, that means he's down to green dice for the rest of the battle. Okay, end of quest. Barrack saved. Lock die. Revive all KO'd heroes and remove all wounds, then shuffle in the frozen attack card into the attack deck. So that's a pretty minor thing, it just seems like, because I can already heal myself at the end of the mission anyway, so I don't know if I'm going to care about that again, since it would uh, kind of take away the knight's option severely. Okay, so jumping in, the knight now has a bonus red die. The priest has her same stuff as always, but don't forget she does have plus one life, so she's at four and the knight's at five. Neither one of them can be one-shotted by the giant. Thank God for that. Then we're going to roll our dice. Hmm, a three or a two, okay. And the knight gets a one or two. Man, really low numbers. So no much reason for the priest to use the three or the two. She'd rather be lower and have a less chance of being attacked. The knight has to either do a counter, which will do two damage to the guy attacks him and get him a shield, but there's a decent chance the guy won't even hit him with a two. Or a one would do one definite damage to the guy. Although the shield could be helpful. Hmm. And definitely not much reason to assign two dice this turn. I want to do that on a turn when I'm going to do uh, better stuff. Yeah, I think... I can't uh, use the hero token to see what the guy's going to do. I'm going to put it on counter. I'll definitely get the shield. That'll make him maybe survive uh, two hits from the guy. And uh, if we get attacked, he can take the hit with that instead of the priest without using one of his uh, hero tokens because I really want to save those for this uh, second die ability. All right, so let's see what the ice giant does. Hopefully not a two. Oh, great. Okay, so he doesn't actually hit us this turn. So the knight uh, counter won't do much, but he does get a block token for next time. And the priest will go ahead and do the one damage option on her holy light. So that's one damage out of 14. Woo! And we're discarding this three plus card. Away it goes. All right, here we go again. Ah, I guess she's doing a four this turn. And for the knight. Oh, okay. So I can't do his big attack, but I could do the repost. You know, the repost will do one damage to him. If he attacks the uh, knight, which I can make sure happens, he'll do another damage to him, and he'll get a shield on both of them. That seems pretty great. The priest, the priest on the other hand, can either do a grenade or heal to any hero or revive a KO'd hero. I didn't even read that. Wow, that's ridiculous. I mean, we're going to throw a grenade at this guy, see how he likes it. All right, so you're almost definitely getting attacked unless he draws a six. Now, unless it's a 5+, plus, the Priest will be his preferred target if he gets, like, a 4 or a 3-plus card. But uh, then the Knight can use one of his tokens to switch to be himself. I guess I could... Yeah, you know what? I am going to use a Hero token to assign a second die. So now I'm going to counter the guy for 3. I assume those stack. And I'll get 2 shields on myself after uh, the attack this turn. So that should, like, really keep me safe. All right, and what does the Ice Giant do? A five plus. Okay, so he will attack the knight without using a token. That's great. So first act is the knight. He just gains a second shield. And note you can only have a total of two shields at a time, so it's good that the guys I can have the guy attack me before I do my repost. Next act is the, uh, the priest, and she does two damage to the guy. So he's got a three out of 14 now. Then I have to roll a die. Let's roll my spare one. If I get a one or two, I take a damage. Nope, got a six. All right, now the knight and the ice giant both have a five. I'm going to let the ice giant attack first. So this remind you, he does three damage and he stuns. So three damage will break all the guy's shields and do one damage actually through to him. 
He's also got a stun token, which means basically for the rest of the battle. Okay, that doesn't go away. He's just going to always uh, be the last person to go. But then the knight gets to act. Um, but when he hit the knight, he takes three more damage. So that puts him at six out of 14, almost half dead already. And then the knight is going to give a block token to himself and a block token to the priest. Plus, he'll do one more damage to the guy, bringing him to seven total. All right, not a bad turn. Uh, the knight is stunned, but not too worried about that. And with this extra shield, even though the guy does three damage, uh, he's still not going to get uh, to killing the knight, even in one big attack. All right, let's go into it again and try to finish this guy off. The priest, okay, I guess she's grenading again. And my knight. Ooh. Okay, definitely got to do retribution. Might as well use it while I have it. And then, okay, I'm going to definitely do a token. So the question is, do I do counter or repost? So both will do basically two damage if I use a token to make sure I'm the target of his attack because I want to get a bunch of damage on me to re make retribution stronger. So I guess I prefer this one, which will give me uh, two shields. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, I'm feeling this is going to be a big blowout turret and probably destroy the ice giant right here and now. Okay, let's see what he gets. Five plus, that's uh, definitely going to target the knight who has a six. The uh, priest four will be ignored. So the knight only has sixes. So he would have gone after the guy anyway, but he stuns and he would have gone at the end. But knight don't care. He's good where he is. But uh, we are going to throw a grenade at the guy. Let's see if it hurts us. It does not, but it does do two to him. That brings him to... That brings him to nine out of 14 damage. He's only got five life left. He's definitely going to get destroyed. All right, so he comes around and hits my knight. I block one of the damage. I block one of the damage, but I take two. So now the knight's got three damage on him. And he can't be stunned again, so he'll just uh, sit where he is. But now retribution. One damage plus one for each one of those cards. So that's four damage. Ouch. And, you know, I forgot to do the uh, one repost damage as well, so... The Ice Giant was already at 710, plus four more, boom! Just totally destroyed. Knight, you are awesome. So the Ice Giant has a spoiled value of six, and wow, we only have five attack cards in the deck, so we are killing, and maybe we should have done a, uh, a hard mission instead of a medium one. Now we did not lock a die to save the barracks, sadly, so we don't get to do any of that stuff. We're just gonna ignore that. But we do each get a free spoils. I would love if the Priest, we'll say this is the Priest one, gets a Poisoning or Beast spoil. Beast, hey, awesome. So she's gonna right away without even worrying about it, get her uh, third hero token, which also lets her assign a second attack die. Awesome. And yet it's a check. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was seeing some cool unique ability. All of the bounty cards let you assign a second attack die. So I don't know why I thought I was like getting some special new one. Okay, as for the knight spoil, he'll get a poison slash beast type. I guess we would have had that regardless of which card I drew first. So he does have two spoils. We might be able to get an item this turn. All right, we go to town. The uh, knight will clearly heal himself by discarding one attack card. That's the only one discarded right now. Priest, once again, doesn't need to, although she does lose her block token. And let's not forget that the priest gets a third uh, hero token as well. So they both have three. All right, we get to look at our three items. Got a music box, remedy potion, or lunar shade dust. All of those cost two, so we can buy any of them. Okay, music box. It's hard to play the top song card from the song deck. That's actually pretty good because songs are like a permanent bonus that lasts for the entire battle. So that's uh, definitely attractive. Discard to heal one and remove a stun from here. I'm not too worried about stun. I don't lie. I think poison is worse. And Lunar Shade Dust. Discard to auto kill a stunned enemy. I might get the ability to stun enemies with my next level up, but I'm not sure. So for now, I'm going to buy the music box with the fighters to spoils. And uh, we'll just get that song deck sometime in this uh, next battle. All right, it is indeed time to level up. So the priest is going to become uh, adding either an arcanist or painter uh, card, although she does keep this. And she can, once again, choose to become the arcanist or the painter and flip her card or to uh, stay a priest again. And the knight can either stay a knight or become a dark knight or a samurai. All right, so dark knight and samurai both have uh, three dice, same as the knight. The Dark Knight does have a blue die, so no doubled up dice, so he'll be a lot more uh, kind of beholden to luck of the roll to see what he gets to use. Okay, his abilities are three damage plus two if the target is undead. That seems pretty uh, prone to luck. Oh, never mind. Uh, as a hero token, do one damage that can't be retaliated against and make a target undead. So holy crap. 
He can do auto damage with his hero tokens and then do five damage with a red die, although it is his only red die, so not great chances of making it happen every time. Soul Eater, only on a six with a single blue, but two damage and heal two, then restore one of your hero tokens. That's a really good combo. And Dark Shield, one repost, do two damage, get a shield. Really not useful with what I already have, so I'm not sure about the Dark Knight. If I flipped, I would get plus one life. I'd actually have six life as a knight, which I think other knights back also has. Okay, the Banished Blade is clearly crud if you uh, don't have the ability to make them undead, so I don't think I would ever pick that. Ooh, so this guy actually gives me a bonus blue die if I uh, flip him over, and then I can potentially heal myself and get a hero token back. That's pretty awesome. How about our friend the Samurai? Ooh, gain two shield tokens with a hero token? That's really, really good. Let's see, Wakazashi, three counter? And I already have two counter, but... Oh, and then do two more damage, wow. Yosamu, five. I do five damage, but I remove the die if I suffer a wound before this attack. Huh. But if I'm really well shielded, but yeah, I mean, these are level three guys, they might get through, but man, if I can make that happen, what a ridiculous thing. Hmm. Okay, and then Tonto. Ooh, I poison to two targets. Wow, that's really good. Yeah, I think I might want to be a samurai. So the question is, what do I get if I flip my uh, knight over? Okay, clearly I'm not going to pick Repost, because that's just dumb. But Flurry. Two damage to two targets and remove all shields from, uh, from this card. Okay. Although it's interesting. If I... Uh, if I flip the Samurai over, the Yosamu ability, or the really good Wakazashi. But see, I really like the Poison one the best. But then I would actually have four dice as my Knight. I can get a second red die and really give myself a lot of options with red, because I already have options with green. You know, I think I actually am going to do that, especially with my ability to, like, assign additional dice. Because that's going to give me six life. Two green dice, two red dice, a ton of options to use them with. Although I will say, mm, no, never mind. I think I'm going to become the uh, samurai because his uh, hero token ability is so much better than mine. And I guess I'll be flurry. It seems kind of dumb to have both counter and another counter ability from the knight. So we will do that. So my guys become a samurai. That gives me two red dice and only one green, and he's got, uh, he can get shields from his hero tokens. And he's got five life still, uh, same as he had before. Okay, now we've got either the Arcanist or the Painter. Ooh, ooh, I don't even have to look at anything else, because look at this real quick. As a hero token, I can stun an enemy, or they stay stunned, which means they'll always act after everybody else. If I get everybody stunned, I can use Yosamu over and over and over again whenever I roll a 5 plus, of course, and do 5 damage to everybody and have no worry about it getting cancelled by uh, people going. So, man, that's a thing to beat. Let's see, there's a painter. Gain a spoils card from the monster deck. I don't really think that matters. Hmm, that's interesting that I can assign either color die. 2 damage to every target with an unresolved attack card matching this color die. That's, that's interesting. I just don't think it's very powerful. Reveal a spoils card to perform its attack. Oh, so she gets spoil cards, and then she can paint the monsters into existence. This is like a Final Fantasy uh, 3 slash 6 reference for those who have played that. Lifelink. One damage to two targets. Any remaining attack, that target, one of these monsters, also targets the other. So that's a cool combo. If I could lifelink like an enemy, then I could uh, do like Yosama against both of them. But the Arcanist abilities look so good. Blizzard. Two damage and stun to two targets and remove their shields. That's great. Whirlwind. Place wounds on an enemy until it has wounds equal to an enemy of your choice. Max six. Oh man, so if I like damage one enemy a lot, that's pretty cool. And Quake. Damage one damage to four enemies and then kill every enemy with one hit point. I mean, that's not that useful, but at least it's neat. But yeah, I think the Arcanist with the stunning is really attractive. So Priest. Let's see, I think I want to get a healing ability since I don't have one. Maybe a Life Spring for two. We're definitely going to do that. And then uh, put the Arcanist. Yes, yeah, so we got a ton of green, and she's got green dice. Whirlwind's only going to happen with blue, but I don't think I'm going to use that much anyway. So cool. I've got an Arcanist, and I've got a Samurai. Awesome. All right, so now with our final level up out of the way, we're going to the third thing. We're on the Darkened Peak. If we survive this, we're going to uh, get to actually fight the boss. All right, the kidnapped villagers are being held captive by the Winged Guardians of the Mountain. So I'm going to shuffle in the Gamayan attack card into the deck. 
Add the effects below to the battle. Instead of acting here, may lock a die in each slot to prevent these effects. Okay, so any color die, 5 plus, 10 to the injured. Remove two wounds from each monster at the end of every round. Oh, wow. So that's going to make it tough to finish them off. Climb the snowy peak. Heroes cannot remove wounds or revive knocked out heroes, so I can't actually heal as long as that's active. I don't have to get rid of that right away, whereas with 10 to the wounded, I might want to get rid of it pretty soon. And then here, we're going to reveal Gamuyan the boss. After all monsters are defeated, return all locked dice and add Gamuyan to the battle and discard this quest card. So if we can survive this, uh, let's be two level three enemies. Then we'll have to go through and actually fight this Gamuyan guy. So let's see what nasty customers we get. A zoo, poisonous flying bird. Seven life, that's not too, too terrible. Uh, two spoils, two damage and poison, or five damage if you're already poisoned. And I've got no way to get rid of poison, so that guy is vicious. And our other one is a mimic. Hey, I always like games with mimics. Oh, wow, I really don't mind him at all. Look, he does one damage. He does three retaliation, which is pretty terrible. But, um, yeah, I mean, the zoo is clearly my primary first target. Don't forget, he's going to heal, too. Is there any way I can just kill him straight up? Uh, let's find out. So I've got a sort of a plan. If I can do a grenade or a blizzard to damage the zoo, too, that'll leave him with five life left. And she can use a hero token to make sure he's uh, stunned. And that'll make sure that the Yosamu finishes him off with five. Now, that's all saying only if I roll at least a three plus with her uh, green dice and at least a five plus with his red dice. So not necessarily a guaranteed thing, but that's sort of the plan I'm hoping for. But no, real quick, I don't get my hero tokens back when I go into the boss fight. So if I use like up all of my resources here, then I'll be making it impossible to defeat the boss. Man, I'd really love to not be poisoned. Come on, give me a five plus. Nope. <laughs> All right. Although maybe I can just walk Azashi him. That's five damage right there. But again, he'd already be poisoning me by that point. Okay, and the Arcanist. Well, she definitely got the values we needed, but man, it's kind of too high. So let's see, is there any way I could actually just defeat this guy? So that would do two damage to both of them. Although well, I don't really want that because the Mimic is going to destroy us for hitting him. And I do the Tonto, so that'd be three damage and poison. And then she could do Blizzard and grenade. Now, the problem is the Mimic is just going to counter us to death, man. I will note that if uh, we kill him with an attack, he does not counter on that attack. So once he's, like, taken his sixth wound, that won't bother him as much. But, I mean, she's doing two, four, six. It's a decent chance he's going to, like, counter both of them just viciously. Well, here, real quick, you know, we might as well see what we've got. Let's discard and see what song we have to help us out. And our song is... Time Minuet. Oh, here's maybe roll one hero die each turn. Hey, it's worth a chance. So, yeah, I'd rather... Let's see if I can get a five plus. Nope, but hey, at least the one means we're less likely to get hit. Maybe I should go for lower value. So let's, let's roll this six and try to get something a little lower. A two. Okay, you know what? So change the strategy. Let's try to slow play it. <laughs> I just hope that they draw poorly. So I'm going to use a one for him, a two for her. Not going to use any uh, second things. I can still get us uh, some shields if he needs them. And let's see how this works out. So yeah, we're not doing any of that stuff. Okay, come on. No ones or twos. Five plus, that's fine. And he only does one damage. Okay, beautiful. So neither of them is actually attacking us. All right, so the Tonto effect is first. And I did just check in the FAQ. It says, can I choose not to resolve an attack for fear of counter? Yes, you can opt not to select one or more targets for an attack. So great, that makes me feel a lot better. So we're gonna Tonto just the zoo and not take the three damage from the Mimic. So that means the zoo will take one damage and poison, he'll start taking one damage every turn. Okay, and then the Arcanus is gonna do one damage to uh, just the zoo, of course, and uh, no damage to the Mimic. Now sadly, uh, 10 to the injured removes two wounds from the zoo, but then he gets one back from the poison. So I guess I can't really slow play too much as long as that's active, but uh, I can try to get these guys next turn. Maybe I'll roll that five plus on the red die. Okay, we discard our cards. We still have a lot of attack turn uh, time. All right, here we go. Show me that five. <laughs> no. Okay, I'll keep the one and reroll this. Okay, so I can do it. But man, they might destroy me. And then here she goes. A lot of low values. So I could just do ones again, although they do have one attack cards hiding in there. It's a pretty low likelihood, but clearly I'm not going to kill them if I'm just doing one damage every turn. I feel like I should go all in and try to defeat this guy like my original plan was. 
So I would do five, but I still have to do two more damage. Where is that going to come from? She do one with Quake. But then I think the healing effect happens on turn five, so he would heal. So I really need to do, like, Blizzard. Okay, so I'm going to reroll one of these and try to get the three for Blizzard. Okay, well, man, but she got a six now. All right, so she'll cast the Blizzard because the grenade has a chance to hurt her. There's not much reason to use any other dice. Although I guess we could get rid of the 10 to the wounded effect. But now if you're allowed to stick with those. So they both got sixes. I can use uh, hero tokens from the Arcanist to uh, make these guys stunned. Which I definitely want to do here. Oh, after attack he heals too. <laughs> Jeez. And then a five plus. Okay, so they're both going to hit us. But again, the Mimic only does one damage. I don't care about him. So I'm going to use a hero token to stun our flying zoo friend here. So he goes last. But this 10 to the injured effect will heal him. The Mimic will attack one of us. I'm going to have attack the Arcanist, because otherwise if he attacked the Samurai, his attack would get cancelled. So now she'll do two damage, and the Samurai will do five. That is seven total. So bam, we defeat this guy before he can do uh, an attack. So we get the spoil, though it usually doesn't matter for uh, this, because you don't have another buying phase before you attack the boss. He's got a two spoils value, so his card plus one more will go to the bottom. Now we just have the Mimic, but uh, he doesn't play very nice, so let's see what happens with that. All right, so she can't survive the three damage, but the Samurai can, and then she could try to heal him. So it seems like the best shot here is to get another Yozamu off, have her do damage first, but then she would die. Oh, no, no, she's got plus one life, so she would still be alive, and then she could hopefully life spring herself. Well, let's just roll the dice and see what options we have. Okay, so no Yuzamu yet. Okay, there we go. So we've got a five. We've got another five for Wakazashi. You know, that's an interesting... Huh. I could avoid taking that big damage altogether by just Wakazashiing him several times, because that does three damage as a counter, and countering won't trigger his own counter. So what if I did that? And then she... Oh my gosh. Okay. So actually, this is good. I can uh, make sure that, oh, but I can't heal yet, right? And yeah, until I get, uh, until I can get a three plus locked. I cannot remove wounds. Now I could spend a hero die to do an extra action this turn, and that would get rid of that effect. Could do that for both of them, I guess. But man, I really want those hero tokens for the boss. I mean, I guess she could just, she could resolve, like, no ability, basically. Or here, you know, she, okay, so she can lock down 10 to the wounded, or 10 to the injured, so the Mimic won't get healed. And then we'll just have him do Wakazashi, and he won't resolve the two damage. And the Mimic's gonna get, oh, man, he's not attacking this turn, he's just getting a shield. <laughs> Darn it. Well, I guess he gives us more time to do the other stuff, but ah, come on, man. All right, so I could do the two damage on the Wakazashi, but clearly I won't. We'll just have uh, roll and she's down one die now. Okay, two and a four. Okay, I got, um, I didn't get a five on the green. Oh man, I didn't realize how hard that was to actually, like, make happen. Let's roll it again. Nope. Wait, I can do this counter and also get a shield for myself. And then she will just hang out. I guess I could climb the hidden peak. No, let's not do that. Okay, we'll just do the counter. Oh crud, she's probably going to be the target because she's got a 2 and he's got a 1. Ah, it's a lot harder to counter than I thought without having the knight's ability to force them to hit him. Okay, let's get back to the original plan. Gonna do 5 damage. Um, he's got a shield right now, so we got to do 7, but they're not healing anymore. Oh man, look at Whirlwind. Place wounds on an enemy until it has wounds equal to an enemy of your choice. Cannot be countered. Gosh, I wish I had done that while the bird was still alive. Alright, alright. Um, let's go to the life spring, I guess, to heal. And he'll spend a hero token to uh, take out the thing that prevents us from healing. So they both have spent one hero token, still have uh, two more for the boss. The Mimic is going to attack on four, so he'll attack the Samurai. So he's going to take three damage from the Mimic and another one. Oh man, she's going to heal before he's actually damaged. Darn it. All right, that's okay. All right, so she heals. So I guess she'll heal herself for the one damage she had. The Mimic attacks the Samurai for one damage. Oh, wait, crap. That means this gets canceled. No. Oh, no, no. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I mean, this isn't ideal, but I'm going to use uh, one of my hero tokens to gain two shields. So that blocks it so it didn't actually get damaged. This still goes off and does five damage to the Mimic. Uh, blocked by one, so that leaves him with... 
leaves him with four damage now, which means a two damage hit will kill him and the, uh, the counter won't go off. The samurai, though, gets hit for three damage, but only two of it gets through, so she can just heal that away next turn. All right, so not too bad. We discard his four, and uh, we should be able to finish this guy off and hopefully not use any more of these. All right, so they both only got two dice now. We seem to do a nice two damage hit. Uh, the Osamo seems too, uh, too unsure. Okay, Blizzard to do the two damage. That seems like a nice, sure thing. We'll go ahead and put a counter on here to get him an extra block, because that'll stick around for the boss. And we'll leave it there. The Mimic is getting a 4+, plus, not going to attack either of us. So he'll counter and get a block on him. Give him a little bit more chance of surviving the boss's attack. Then the Arcanus will Blizzard the Mimic. And again, that defeats him before he gets a chance to counter. So they are both defeated. Yes. Now both of our locked dice come back. So we're back to our full complement here. And now we reveal the boss. Gamoyun, Predator of the Skies. 20 life, that's not great. Okay, set up. Add three villager cards with an assigned six die on them as allies. When Gamoyun is defeated, flip his card over. As the heroes try to free the captured villagers, the flying captive swoops into attack. Oh, by the way, lest that we forget, we are going to shuffle two cards in from defeating the Mimic. So bosses are a little different. Uh, when you draw attack cards, you'll notice the attack cards have either blue or red text. And that'll determine what he does. So he'll either do one damage to four targets, I guess that includes those villagers, and then remove a capture die on this card from play. Or with a blue, he'll do one damage, capture a die, so he takes a die and puts it on here. And uh, the quest card said he can only have one die captured at a time. And that's to uh, two targets. So he's going to be taking our dice and then, uh, like, removing them from the game entirely. That's not very uh, nice of him. He's immune to auto kills. He's immune to stun. Well, that sucks. I wish I had known that. My Arcanus is suddenly a lot less useful. And he does one attack card per hero, so he could be doing these effects uh, multiple times a turn. Okay, so I'm going to get my three villagers and give them each a six die. So here they are from the uh, deck. So they've each got three life, it looks like. And the guy's basically going to always target him, especially with that um, big attack that uh, hits four different targets. At the end of each round, each of them is going to add a card back into the attack deck. Well, geez, I'm never going to lose from the attack deck running out then. Clearly, I just have to worry about the... Uh, my hero is dying. But I feel like we're in a pretty good place. I've got two hero tokens for her, one for him. Now she's just going to use hero tokens to uh, do second dice, since clearly her stun ability won't matter anymore. And uh, the samurai would like to keep on hitting with the Zusamu, so shields are going to help there. It looks like this guy rarely does more than one damage with an attack, so hopefully our shields will keep us alive for a while. She can life spring him. I don't know how crazy this guy's going to be once he flips over, but, you know, his first side looks like it's more going to kill the villagers. Now, I haven't seen anything that says, like, I lose when the villagers die. I just won't have them discarding uh, or putting cards back in the deck, so I'm not too worried about them. Let's go, Arcanist. Okay, got a three. That's not enough for a whirlwind, although whirlwind won't really matter here. Yeah, that whirlwind has been a bust. I wish I'd used it earlier. And the samurai. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, so, whoops, come back, five. I want you to be a five. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, not much need to... Oh, wait, he's not immune to poison. See, I am going to use... Well, that's my last token. i got to save that for... Uh, yeah, for when um, I'm about to get hurt and not use my Yosamu. So I do want to poison him eventually, though. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah, you know what? No, this, this seems smarter. I think I'm just going to poison him this turn. Not going to use Samu Moon later. Well, no, never mind. No, I got to do that. I got to do that. Okay, and she... Uh, she could do a Blizzard. She could do a Grenade. So the stun wouldn't apply. The removing shields doesn't really matter. Or she could just heal him for two. That seems, in a way, like a better option. So, yeah, let's just do that. Now, if he gets hit twice before the five comes up, then he'll have to use his last hero token just to get shielded and make this go off. Oh, and actually, oh, I forgot. This guy steals dice, so if a blue attack hits him, then he'll have his dice stolen. You know what? So never mind. I am going to poison him first and uh, not try to go with the big guns quite yet. Okay, so first he's got a six red, so that's only going to hit the villagers, and a three blue. Now, we get to decide the order, so he's going to steal the samurai's die, but only after the samurai uh, hits him and poisons him. So first is the Life Spring. The Arcanist will heal two damage from the uh, Samurai. So now he just has a block. 
We're gonna have the samurai go next. He'll do one damage to the boss and poison him. So we know the guy's gonna die in 20 turns regardless. But then the boss does one damage to the samurai, which gets blocked by his sword, but also steals his die, which is really nasty. He's gonna eat it in just a second. Oh my gosh. And then uh, this also hits one villager, because remember it targets two people. And then finally he eats the samurai's die and uh, only hits the villagers because both of our uh, dice were low enough that it doesn't affect us. At the end of the turn, he takes one more damage, so he's up to uh, two, but clearly we can't wait to kill this guy. Let's, uh, let's try to him a bunch. Okay, and at the end of the round, we add three cards back into the attack deck. There we go. So we're still looking fine there. All right, here we go. So we have no shields now on the samurai. Let's see if we can get a five on his red. Nope. Let's re-roll that with the time minuet. Nope. Okay, um, I guess two damage and a shield counter is probably my best option here. And she will do a blizzard for damage. That seems good. She could assign a second die, but unless it's a blizzard or a life or a grenade, I don't think it's really worth it. Okay, so we got threes and fours in our cards. I would love if he stole the villager's dice instead of mine. Okay, one blue, so he's gonna steal one of our dice again. And then a two blue, okay, so he's actually not going to destroy any dice this turn, he'll just hang on to them. Okay, so closest to the one is the samurai, so he's stealing another one of the samurai's dice. But the samurai does hit him for two because of his counter ability, but now the samurai's ability will never go off this turn because he was uh, after the monster, so he won't get his shield. He does take one damage from the attack. And the two also targets the samurai, so now he's taken two damage total, but he can't steal another shield. No, I'm sorry. Uh, both of these attack two people, so that means the Arcanist also took two damage out of her uh, only five life. Now she's the only one who actually gets to attack with her blizzard for two damage. The, uh, the stun effect is ignored. And then he takes uh, one more damage from the poison, so he's at seven out of 20. That's good, I guess. And the villagers shuffle three cards back in, but again, I'm not really worried about these. At this point, I'm worried about not having dice anymore. So at the moment, he can't steal any more dice, but who knows what the next round might bring. Uh, okay. Four, let's re-roll it, try to get a five. Nope, they don't want us to. So we'll just taunt to him for one damage. And then... Yeah, she can't do any of her big attacks with these... Uh, well, let's try to re-roll this uh, two. Nope. <laughs> okay, so she'll just do a, a quake for one damage, I guess. Or she could life spring one of them. Maybe that's the better move. Yeah, I mean, one damage versus healing us two. That seems better, but man, this guy does not like giving us time. Okay, and he gets, ah, man, a two. So he's gonna steal, no, no, okay, no, well, he won't. He already has a die, and he didn't get any reds to eat a die, so he's not gonna steal anything. He's just gonna hit the samurai again. So first the Arcanist goes, and she will go ahead and heal the samurai. Then he'll hit this guy for one damage. And by the way, anytime you would uh, poison somebody who's already poisoned, you do a wound instead. So that's actually really good for us. I'd forgotten that he's going to, uh, take two damage that puts him up to nine so that tanto ability is not too weak um this guy hits him and one of the villagers let's try to keep him alive as long as we can then we get to six he just hits villagers so it's one and then one of them is gone okay and then he takes one damage from the poison man this poison is totally a godsend he's already half dead so to finish out this turn i'll discard the two attack cards and the villagers will put them right on the bottom of the deck but it uh, looks like they're not too long for this world. Samurai still down to a single die. Come on for a five plus. Let's re-roll that. Okay. And, hmm. So I could do a whirlwind. Oh, but again, yeah, it doesn't do anything. Like, whirlwind is literally useless. So the blue dies is nothing for me. So I guess I need blizzard for two more damage. And tanto for a damage and a poison, which again is two damage right now. So that's pretty good. So we both got three, he's got a five, that won't hit us, but it will hit the villagers, and a six. Okay, so he's going to eat the die that he's been sitting on. That's unfortunate, he'll be ready to steal another one, but he doesn't do uh, anything else to us this turn. So we both go first, and it's going to be a straight up four damage, and I'm just going to add the uh, fifth one from the poison. So he's got five life left, and then he's doing one damage to four, so both these villagers are definitely gone. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for being little meat shields for me for a little while. 
Now we just get two gone, and we're definitely not going to shuffle any more attack cards back in. All right, if we can do uh, another five damage this turn, that will finish him off. Oh, don't forget that he's uh, apparently got another side to him. All right, really high values there. Probably going to reroll one of those. I don't want to reroll this. I just want to keep that and do the two damage. Hmm. Yeah, let's reroll a six and see if we can get a three. Yes. All right, so I'd rather do that because that'll be enough to defeat him. So, yeah, let's see. Now... He might steal one of our dice, though, if he gets a low enough attack, so let's just hope that he doesn't. Don't get a low blue, don't get a low blue. Okay, three plus blue is fine, because we'll have already hit him by that point. And a five plus, that'll miss us entirely. So the samurai will do two from his uh, poison attack, since the guy's already poisoned. And the alchemist will do another two, leaves him with one life. He will then hit the alchemist for one, leaving him with one life left. That's not great. And he'll uh, steal his die. Now the alchemist can afford to lose a die, so that's all right. Although I wish it was a, a blue die instead. Okay, then both of these are discarded. Okay, and then he takes his 20th damage. All right, so when he's defeated, flip this card over. Okay, villagers cower. <laughs> what villagers? As the beast sets its eyes on the hearers with dark determination. Reveal one attack card per defeated villager. Oh man, that means he's doing three attacks a turn now. He's only got 10 life though. Two damage to three and then heal two. Two damage and stun and steal a die and then heal two. Um, okay, well I assume he's still got the alchemist die so he can't steal any more dice. But, gosh, now doesn't say anything about discarding his tokens so I'll assume he's still poison, which will help us of course. But yeah, three attack cards a turn, that's pretty vicious and he's doing a lot of damage. I think we're just going to have to really try to roll low values and hope that the three attack cards miss us. But let's see how it goes. All right, our luck is not great with so few dice. Oh, except, well, two will do something, the one won't. Huh. Could go for that. We do have a token that would let me get two shields. That would stop one of his attacks. But every single one of his attack cards is going to hit a six, and so now i got to just re-roll that and hope for a low value. Okay. Hey. Um, all right, so not too bad. Um, I guess I'll heal two instead of doing one damage. That's the only way we're going to kind of stay alive here. So if we came to save the villagers, I guess we've totally failed in our mission. A four, not going to hit us at all. Give himself a shield. That's okay. Ah, oh, man. And <laughs> So that's uh, attack us. There's going to be two damage each of us and heal himself soon. He's going to heal himself two more. So my samurai's going to attack first for one, two damage because he's poisoned. And then, hmm. So, oh, actually, sorry. He would have gotten the shield immediately, so that'll go away to block one of that damage. And he's going to attack the Arcanist, so she'll throw away this uh, healing herself because that's the only way she's going to survive his attack. So then with his two, he'll do two damage and then heal two, so all of his damage is gone. The Arcanus is right on death's door. And then uh, he'll take one damage from the poison, so that was not much progress on that turn. <laughs> I think this might be a, a hopeless cause to do ten damage to him, jeez. Alright, here we go again. Alright, a four. I mean, that could do a grenade, I guess. Or she could just heal again if she's even still alive. Let's re-roll the four and try to get something lower, I think. Okay, I mean, three with a blizzard or a life spring is better. Let's re-roll this. We either want a five or, like, a one. Okay. Is there even any point? Well, maybe she gets hit instead of him, but no, like, all his attacks hit almost everybody, right? Huh. I don't know if there's any chance that I actually get off the five damage attack. I don't think there is, so I'm going to just do the Tonto. And she should probably heal... I, mean, I feel like I'm pretty much dead <laughs> with all the villagers gone, with uh, me having so many of my dice eaten by the guy. I think I just uh, had too bad of a run here at the end. And really, her uh, her tokens are are basically useless. I can't stun the guy, and you know she doesn't have any way to use her blue die. Might as well not exist, so she can't like use a second die. Same thing for this guy over here. He can just get the two shields. Uh, I mean, whatever. All right, let's see if we get super lucky in some magical mystical way um 
Again, let's go Blizzard, whatever. We're going to die this turn. Let's try to die doing uh, <laughs> 7 damage to him. Theoretically, we would get him within 1 life if he somehow just didn't do anything this turn. We hit him for 7 damage, and then uh, and then the poison got him one more. And I'm pretty sure this will be the end. 4 plus, that's not great. And a 6. And a 3. All right, so the 3 is going to hit the Arcanist um, for 2 damage, which will defeat her. And uh, would stun her, and then we'll heal him too. All right, so we're certainly going to have her do her Blizzard first and do 2 damage to him. And then he'll do 2 damage to her, which KOs her. So I just looked at the rules, and actually she's not dead. She uh, She's just knocked out. And she still rolls every turn. If she gets double, she comes back with one hit point and can do something that turn. So, hey, maybe it gives us a chance. Now, as he knocks her out, though, he heals too. So, <laughs> God, there's that one. Okay, then um, the four would hit my samurai. I'm going to use his last hero token to gain two block and block that so I get my attack off. So then I do hit him for five. I mean, that's certainly progress. Oh, I'm sorry. He would have <laughs> healed one. Um but then he hits me for two more, so I have uh, two life left, and then he heals this down to three, and then he takes one from the poison. So with all of that, we still only managed to get him to uh, four damage, and one of my two heroes is KO'd at this point. That's it, we still roll, we can get doubles, she revives, that's not doubles, nope, okay, so she's down, which means I'm pretty sure this guy's dead. Um, let's re-roll that, try to get a one. <laughs> no, that's even worse. Okay, that misses him. That does not. That kills him. <laughs> so does that. Okay. So he does take his final two life, and my samurai is destroyed. So we made it to the final boss, but could not seal the deal. Just didn't have enough consistent damage there, and this guy was pretty uh, challenging anyway. If we'd saved some villagers, I guess we would have had a better chance of things. But yeah, that's uh, Diceborn Heroes. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you at the next stop.